Do you hear my ears? Hello, Doodlebugs. It's Mary, and welcome back to the studio. The very first Monday of every month, I'm going to be making these videos where we go over creative topics, answer some questions, and feature some of your artwork. This last February was the first time doing your art this month, and there were so many posts that people made and created wonderful artwork, uh, which I'm going to be showing later on. But first, uh, some some thoughts, some reflections on the last month. So I've recently had a bit of a revelation as far as where I'm at creatively. This weekend we went camping, which was amazing. I got to sit down by the fire and just draw for the sake of drawing, which made me realize I don't do that as often as I should be. One of the most common questions I tend to get is how do I get good at drawing? And my response is always to say, keep drawing, keep filling those sketchbooks. Well, I've been drawing in a sketchbook this weekend that I started a long time ago and it's still not filled up, which means I'm way behind. Lately, I've been prioritizing the behind the scenes work of maintaining a YouTube channel and online content constantly, which is good to stay on top of that work but it is endless work and I've just been prioritizing that over keeping myself in shape regarding my craft. And I can call it my craft because I'm wearing all black today. So moving forward this month, my personal goal is to be sketching and drawing more for just the fun of it and exercising those muscles because you can fall out of shape, trust me. It doesn't matter if you're just starting with art and learning to draw, or if you've been doing it for years, you gotta like keep up with that because I'm feeling it. I'm feeling a little rusty. And no, this isn't a pity party. I'm not fishing for comments saying, oh, but you're so good, Mary. But I just wanna share that because I tend to go through cycles of this. I've been in this phase before. I know I'll get myself out of it. And I know I will be right back here later on in the future and wa probably watching my own video, giving myself a pep talk from the past to me in the future. Hi, time travel. Hey, we got a lot of comments and questions on the previous studio video. Thank you very much for sharing and caring. Here's a question from, I don't know how to read that, who asks, if you are self-taught, do you recommend taking a beginner's art class to learn basic concepts? Yes, my answer is always yes. This is kind of in line with where I'm feeling right now. The idea of continually exercising and working out and staying in shape, even if you feel like you have a handle on what it is you're doing, classes or just some outside source of information is always so helpful. I love watching what other artists on YouTube make and their tutorials and videos because it reminds me of the basics. And the basics are called the basics for a very important reason. And that's because that's really all you need to know. Everything else is complex filler, fancy pantsy things that are great, but without the basics, all that fancy pantsy stuff doesn't really help. And when you're self-taught, there might be some things that you have skipped over just because you are not interested in it or maybe it didn't even occur to you. I think one of the biggest mistakes you can make is assuming that you got it all figured out. Like I have to remind myself to keep drawing in my sketchbook because I keep telling other people that. I know that's the right thing to do, but I haven't been doing that. We all just need little refreshers and reminders. We got a comment from Naya who says, off topic comment, I was really pleased to see you modeling proper cell phone ergonomics. Thanks Naya for reminding us that holding the phone at eye level not only looks good on camera, but it's more ergonomical. That word is not a real word. And we got a comment from Vicky who says, hi, I'm an art teacher in San Diego at Dana Middle School. Dana Middle School? Am I? I can't read. We love your videos. Can we join you in your Art of the Month submissions? Yes, absolutely, Vicky. The whole purpose of your art this month is to help prompt creativity. Even if your students aren't posting things to social media, uh, hop on in because there's a lot of great examples of all the different kinds of things you can create from one suggestion. Which brings us to your art this month. What did you make? Every month we're gonna make some art based on a topic or a theme. February's word was adventure. And this is my adventure artwork that I made. This was made with watercolor and India ink on Bristol board paper. I'd started brainstorming images for adventure, which led me to a kid exploring the woods with a dog. While sketching ideas for the painting, it slowly warped from being a kid with their dog from the kid's point of view to just the dog and approaching it from a dog's perspective. Because I feel like when you go for walks with dogs, they are 
constantly going on little adventures. The dog is very much inspired by our dog, Siri. Um, she was put down last summer. She always loved going on adventures. She was very talented at finding dead things in the woods. And since then, I'd been wanting to do a painting to honor her, and it just kind of turned into this one, which was in the words of a great man, a happy little accident. So this is my adventure art and the time-lapse video of this will be coming out later this month. But let's take a look at your adventure art. There were a lot of people participating in your art this month, which is awesome. However, it's impossible for me to showcase everybody's work. So I grabbed a handful of images that really jumped out to me. In no way is this me judging or grading. I just wanted to like grab some images that caught my eye. All right, so this first one is from Thomas Art. I don't know if I said that right. Oh, I love the design of it, the, the triangles. I'm into triangles lately. Feels like an album cover. And this is a fantastic design from Legan Art. The compass, the sky, so simple yet detailed. The blimp is an awesome addition. This is a painting from Sketching Ducks points for presentation. If you use a dog for display easel, I will love you forever. And this is from Magdalenapos. Minimalism. I've said before, I am trying to apply minimalism into my own work. This is a fantastic example of how you can take an idea and simplify it into the most basic of images. Art by Lyra posted this beautiful, colorful mushroom landscape that I also want to go explore. Jessica has been playing with a wood burner. What I adore about this is that the image design does not at all fit the dimensions of the wood. That's some next level composition. I really dig the framing of the balloon in this image. Emilia Koljetsik, I am so sorry. I can't say your last name, but I can appreciate your style. I really dig this style. Dodo made a character, Colin the Adventure Boy. He just looks ready to go, ready to rock, Colin. You go get him. I hope bears don't get you. The God of Pagano posted on their deviant art this uh, montage picture. It's almost like something from a movie poster of the, a trip to Thailand, all the things that happened, both good and bad. And of course, Gaia Julia also chose to make an adventure drawing from an animal's perspective. That cat is having the adventure of a lifetime. Adoris Arts did awesome typography using the word adventure with some imagery in the background. I wish I had nice handwriting. Ugh. Doodles by Dishwashi is still drawing whippets. Thank goodness. Dog adventures. Dogs seem to adventure out into the wilderness, whereas cats adventure into enclosed spaces. And that's the difference. And those are just a few of the many great pieces that people were posting for your art this month. I was not able to feature all of them, but if you go to Twitter and Instagram, look up hashtag Y-A-T-M, you can see what a bunch of other people made. So this month I will give us a topic and we will have until March 27th will be our deadline to create and post whatever it is the topic inspires. And the topic is tiny, tiny, tiny? Whatever that conjures, it could be an object, a place, a color, a texture, tiny. And you can post what you make to Twitter or Instagram, hashtag it, Y-A-T-M. Tag me in it too, if you really want me to see it. I will do my best to check everything out there. I know I got some questions. People were wondering if they could submit on other platforms. Um, I didn't even check Facebook this month. And uh, ha, there you go. There's so many social media places. So if you really want me to see it, I say Twitter or Instagram is your best chance of getting that seen. But if you wanna post it anywhere else, please feel free to. And if you don't wanna share what you make, that's totally cool too. This is just about getting the ideas moving and motivating us to create and complete pieces on a regular basis. Go follow me on all the social medias to keep up with that and more on Instagram. I'm doing daily doodles. On this channel, I do weekly art videos every Monday, so be sure you're subscribed and uh, then hit that alert button because let's be redundant with that process. And if you're into podcasts, check out Peas in a Podcast. It's on iTunes and SoundCloud with me and Dante. We've been answering people's questions and leading them astray with terrible advice. Come get weird with us. And as always, comment below with your thoughts and suggestions. If you got an idea for a topic for your art this month or a painting that you wanna see, comment below, vote with your fingertips. It's all we have these days. Thank you for watching Doodlebugs. Goodbye. Oh.
Oh, I'm still here.